Tony Kroos is finally retiring at the end of this season and it's safe to say that football will never be the same. The midfield maestro leaves behind a legacy that very few people can say they have matched or even come close to. This is his story. Kroos left Bayern in 2014 and little did anyone know what was going to transpire in the following decade. The German, despite being happy in Munich, decided to leave because he felt undervalued. Sat in the office of the then president of Bayern, Karl-Heinz Rummenigge, Kroos was denied a wage increase, uttering words that hurt the midfielder's pride. We won't pay you any more than 10 million euros because you're not world class, the president told him. Tony is a friend of mine and I know that it wasn't the money that made him leave. It was that the decision against a wage increase showed him that he didn't have the club's full confidence. The person who did everything possible to keep him at the club was in fact Pep Guardiola. The manager didn't want him to leave under any circumstances, but Romanigger didn't change his mind. It's certain now that seeing how things turned out, Romanigger is heavily regretting his stance. There is a certain comfort in knowing that in less than two months, Tony Kors will conclude his career in the sport where he excelled beyond most, and in specific areas like passing and match control, he was arguably unparalleled. We now fully recognize how special it will be to watch him play in the Champions League final on June 1st, his last match for the club. I mean, that's not an easy answer, to be honest, Kors said when asked whether or not this was his best season back in February. We've had so many successful years over the past 10 years, it's difficult to choose one over the other. But of course, I'm happy to reach this stage and be able to compete. But as we know, the real season for a team like Real Madrid starts in March. So let's see where it'll rank at the end. We're now in late May, just days away from the Champions League final. Regardless of how the final unfolds and the outcome of the Euros this summer, Tony Kors's legacy is already well established. He's arguably, and in the opinion of this author, definitively the best passer in football history and one of the top five central midfielders of all time. His 10th season at Real Madrid is likely his best. If he secures a sixth Champions League title and wins the Euros, he will solidify his place among the top three all-time in his position. But even without these achievements, Kors's greatness is undeniable. Here is why. When we reflect on Kors as a footballer, his exceptional passing comes to mind. While it's right to focus on his passing, we shouldn't overlook his all-around game. Kors was a specialist, a sniper, excelling in his role like no other. Yet there is more to his game. We'll delve into that more later. Returning to his passing, Kors completed 94 4% of his 22,088 passes in La Liga, according to Opta. This season in the Champions League, he's averaged a 91.7% pass success rate. This statistic is remarkable, considering the intense pressure he faced, particularly against Manchester City and RB Leipzig. He was constantly under siege, with every touch contested by multiple defenders. Yet he remained unfazed, breaking high-pressing schemes with one touch, one shoulder drop, one pass. This performance is partly due to his natural ability and talent, Talent, but also to his mental fortitude, an often underrated aspect of his game. Real Madrid will lose an irreplaceable player, but they will also lose his composure and leadership. How often has Real Madrid played away games under hostile conditions against aggressive teams? How often has Kors's calmness, along with Luka Modric's, been the team's anchor? Real Madrid might not have reached the Champions League final without him. Many of our players played big games, so we know how to stay calm in difficult situations because we know we can beat everyone, Tony Kors said back in 2018 en route to another Champions League triumph. Even when we're not winning, we can change the game. We've experienced all kinds of situations, so we don't feel anxious. Over the two legs against Manchester City, Tony Kors demonstrated exceptional composure under pressure, consistently making the right passes and touches. His calmness was crucial, especially at the Etihad. In the subsequent game in Munich, he delivered one of the best passes of the entire Champions League campaign to open the scoring. A week later, against Bayern again, he completed 18 of 20 long balls with remarkable accuracy while having the most touches of anyone on the field. Nevertheless, his critics label him a sideways passer, a narrative pushed by a minority who don't fully understand the game, including Bayern Munich's honorary president Uli Hoeneß, who claimed in 2021 that Kors has no place in today's football. Ironically, Kors has arguably been the best midfielder in the world since then. The sideways passer label has always been a myth. 
No player in Champions League history has made as many progressive passes and passes into the final third as Kroos. In 2023, he executed the most line-breaking passes in Europe and was the continent's highest usage ball progressor. His consistently high accuracy is not due to easy sideways passes, but is even more impressive given the high difficulty of his passes. However, Kroos's exceptional passing skills often overshadow other aspects of his game. His ability to evade pressure is unparalleled. While he may not have a high volume of dribbles like a winger, the dribbles he does make are highly effective. Corsa's dribbling isn't about taking players on directly, but is evident when he's surrounded by defenders. He's nearly impossible to dispossess. Charging at him often results in being outmaneuvered. Press him and he'll punish you by finding the open man, allowing his team to break with a numerical advantage. Give him space and he'll thrive, orchestrating play from deep to create chances out of nothing. Corsa's first touch consistently moves the ball away from defenders, creating space and separating him from his marker by opening up his body away from the press. His next touch either takes him past his opponent with a subtle shoulder shimmy or propels the ball across the field in one fluid motion. One of his signature moves, the long ball diagonal switch to Danny Carvajal, is somehow underrated despite being a staple for the past decade. Perhaps we become desensitized to it, or course makes it look so easy that we forget how difficult it truly is. The most impressive part is that Kors sees the play before it happens. He knows Carvajal's position, where the defenders are congested, and how his first touch will set up the next one to send the ball diagonally to a wide open Carver Hall. This move is automatic and dismantles defensive lines lured into thinking they can intercept on the strong side. Corsa's unique skill set makes him irreplaceable. If he could be replaced easily, he wouldn't be the transcendent figure he is in football history. Corsa cannot be replaced. Much like Cristiano Ronaldo, Karim Benzema, Alfredo Di Stefano, Marcelo, and a few others. The same difficult conversation will inevitably come regarding Regarding Luka Modric. Even bringing in another progressive passer won't replicate Corsa's elite ability to advance the ball. Changing the team's approach may be the best solution. With Corsa's departure, Eduardo Camavinga could become the primary left central midfielder, and Jude Bellingham might move deeper into midfield. Other options include new signings that could contribute. That discussion will be more relevant after the Champions League final. Despite Corsa leaving, Modric, Camavinga, Danny Ceballo, and Bellingham can fill that position. More responsible responsibility will fall on Aurelian Chouameni to act as a vertical passer from deep. As Arda Gulash's career progresses, he might also develop into a role that supports the team's ball progression with his passing. Playing differently is not necessarily a bad thing. It could mean a change of pace or a shift in tactics. Real Madrid has always been tactically adaptable, shaping their play based on the strengths and weaknesses of their squad. This flexibility is one reason they have been more successful than any other club, especially compared to those that rigidly adhere to a single identity without a plan B. Some versions of Real Madrid have featured traditional number nines like Ivan Zamorano and Ruud van Nistelrooy. In other eras, more mobile, roaming link-up players like Emilio Butragueño, Raul Gonzalez and Karim Benzema have taken center stage. The team adjusts accordingly. In the post-course era, Real Madrid will need to adapt to accommodate the younger superstars like Jude Bellingham and Eduardo Camavinga. If this situation had arisen just two years ago, one might have argued that the team's defense could improve without course. However, this argument no longer holds, highlighting Corsa's career best season. His defensive contributions have reached new heights. Before the World Cup last season, Corsa's defensive improvements were evident. He tracked runners, won battles in midfield, and made crucial last-second challenges. Although his defense dipped after the World Cup, as did the team's overall performance, he has regained his form this season. Some isolated plays, such as Foden's goal at the Bernabeu in the first leg of the Champions League semi-finals, have been critiqued. However, the team collectively broke down before that goal, and Kors was often covering multiple gaps left by others. It's important to consider the overall impact rather than isolated incidents. Kors has prevented more goals than he has conceded, with his overall contributions being overwhelmingly positive, especially given his defensive performance this season. But if Kors wanted to retire at the peak of his career, he has achieved that. Since his first match for the club in 2014, when he dominated Sevilla in the UEFA Super Cup, Kors has consistently fit seamlessly into the team. Tony Kors to Real Madrid is said to be the steal of the century, taking into account the difference this transfer created for both Bayern and Real. And his retirement marks the end of an era. But his legacy is firmly established, and he left a mark in football that will never be forgotten. What do you think about Tony Kors? Let us know down in the comments below, and we will see you in the next one.